Our next speaker had a vision for integrated open infrastructure long before we had a name for it. He's the founder of the Ubuntu Project, CEO of Canonical, and my favorite astronaut. Please welcome Mark Shuttleworth. Right, good morning, everybody. Are you feeling stylish in your socks this morning? I'm guessing that all of you faced the same terrible dilemma that I did this morning. Is it going to be Hello Kata or Hello Kitty? Coming to this forum is always wonderful to reconnect with open source leaders, to meet customers, to meet companies that want to make OpenStack central to their operation. Perhaps the most rewarding thing for me was to look at the agenda of the conference this week and see just how many of our partners and customers are presenting. I think that's what really defines open source, is that it changes the nature of the relationship between players, and it makes customers and vendors co-creators in the future. What happens here is as exciting to me as the public cloud, where we see more than a million instances of Ubuntu launched almost every single day just across the top five public clouds, nearly two-thirds of all public cloud activity. I think those of us who were here at the very beginning uh, and who helped and who chose as outside rebels, effectively, to create this foundation can look around the room and look at the last period and say, we did the right thing. This revolution has legs. And it is a revolution because previously, um, infrastructure was siloed. And the problem with silos is that no one institution can possibly have all the best ideas. The great thing about open source, the important thing about open source for me, is that it enables innovation to come from everywhere. And we have to celebrate that, right? We have to make sure that the right ideas, the best ideas, are the ideas that spread the fastest and are the easiest to consume. And we're coming up to some important milestones. This year marks 10 years since the first code that would become OpenStack was written. And this month represents 15 years of my commitment to Ubuntu. And it's been an incredible 15 years, an incredible 10 years for OpenStack. In that time, I've watched Ubuntu earn a carrier grade rating, thanks to OpenStack. And I've watched us climb up the rankings for security to number one consistently which has been really important in our efforts to serve the financial services industry. I'm really happy to tell you that as of today, more than half of the 20 largest financial institutions in the world are building open infrastructure on Ubuntu with Canonical. This is also a milestone where it's perhaps a critical time for us to think about our leadership of open source, because we're no longer the rebel outsiders we are, in a sense, becoming the empire. And it's really important for us to think about how we want to lead. To me, how we play matters as much as which of our ideas win. If we want to be different to the leaders to the previous empire, then we have to choose every day to be different. Now, I know for a fact that nobody asked to replace dueling vendors with dueling foundations. Nobody asked for that. I'm a fan of George Orwell's book, 1984. If you are, then maybe you're also uncomfortable with language that suggests that while all open source projects are equal, some are more equal than others. It is really important for us to find and celebrate the best ideas. What's the difference between a vendor that only promotes the ideas that are in its own interests and a foundation that does the same. Or worse, if a foundation will only represent the projects that it's paid to represent, then is it really structuring an open agenda? Or is it just a fig leaf? And you don't need me to tell you that what's behind the fig leaf might be a little ugly. So having raised those questions, let me talk a little bit about what I think it means to be a vendor committed to being open. I think the most important thing is to remember that no one institution, no one upstream, no one project is going to have all of the best ideas. 
What's really important is for us to offer people the widest possible menu of open source, the widest possible range of choices, regardless of their origin. And so having thought about some of the disputes that we've seen bubbling up in the open source world, I decided the best place to start to lead a change was at Canonical itself. Starting today, while we've always supported multiple different kinds of open source infrastructure, starting today, we will consolidate and unify the contracts and the commitments that we make to open infrastructure for multiple different projects. For example, we've always supported OpenStack deployed on Ubuntu lots of different ways. From today, all of that will be at our lowest price point, and all of that will be um, uh, with the same SLAs. Similarly, for Kubernetes, we support Canonical's charmed Kubernetes. We support MicroStack. Going forward, we will also support Kubernetes from Google, a uh, Azure, uh, Amazon, and VMware. We're in a great privileged position to be able to do that because all of those deliver um, Kubernetes on Ubuntu. What this does is it removes some of the friction for people trying to embrace open infrastructure and enables them to make tactical decisions late and to change their mind with agility in exactly how they want to operate any particular piece of open infrastructure. We have to be a partner that enables people to find the right tool for the job, regardless of its origin, and to integrate that on multiple clouds and multiple kinds of private infrastructure. Now, the definition of infrastructure and what people consider to be infrastructure is incredibly broad. For some organizations, it's millions of appliances with IP addresses dotted around the globe. For, the, for others, it's a few giant data centers. And while we can deliver, at Canonical, we can deliver everything, uh, OpenStack in every form factor from a single node. There's a presentation this week on MicroStack, right up to very agile, self-upgrading clusters at scale. OpenStack won't always be the right tool for the job. In, um, in almost every single open infrastructure edge design from retail or telco um, that we've seen, uh, you'll find Ubuntu and Maz, and I'm really proud of that. And in many of them, you'll find OpenStack as well, but not all of them. I'm delighted to tell you that this week alone, Canonical's delivering 27 brand new OpenStack clouds to companies around the world. OpenStack is clearly critical and clearly part of the solution. But many use cases don't require all of that complexity. And if we want to help people find the right solution, the best solution, we have to be open to all of the possibilities. Other open source projects and even proprietary solutions, our customers will deploy VMware. They will deploy Azure Stack, GKE on-prem, Amazon Outpost. And it's up to us to figure out how to make that easy for them to integrate and operationalize. In this forum, we are becoming a mature project. This is a smaller group, but that's OK if it's a group that celebrates its focus. I'm here for this project, for OpenStack. I believe it's the best game in town for complex, multi-tenanted virtualization infrastructure. But it, for, for it to stay that, we have to retain our focus on this project. Yes, we're a mature project, but that's no excuse to have a midlife crisis. We don't need to flail around and go find something new and shiny to drive, right? I'm here this week to double down and to bring, make sure that Canonical brings its best game to this project to make sure that OpenStack scales better, is more performant, is more secure, and easier to operate. And I'm delighted to know that there are many, many other people here who want that for the future. Thank you very much.